now let us discuss about unrestricted simplex protocol unrestricted simplex protocol comes under elementary data link protocols we have three elementary data link protocols such as unrestricted simplex protocol second one is simplex stop and wait protocol for noisy channel third one is simplex stop and wait protocol for noiseless channel that is for error free channel in this video we are going to discuss about the the first data link protocol the first elementary data link protocol that is unrestricted simplex protocol this protocol can also be called as utopian protocol the dictionary meaning of the word utopian is ideal so ideal means everything is perfect nothing will goes wrong so like mr perfect okay so we can say that unrestricted protocol is unrealistic protocol why because it is quite impossible to implement this protocol practically so it is assumption only so it is theoretical approach only practically it is impossible to implement this protocol why because here everything should be perfect there will be no error there will be no flow control uh, there should be infinite amount of data at both sender and receiver side everything should be ideal but practically it is quite impossible so now let's see why it is named as unrestricted simplex protocol unrestricted the name itself specifies the meaning there is no restriction on the sender side and receiver side sender can send any amount of data to the receiver at any time so likewise receiver can receive any amount of data from the sender at any time so there is no restriction on the sender and the receiver so that's why it is called as unrestricted and simplex we know the meaning of the word simplex simplex means the data can be transmitted only in one direction so let we have host 1 host 2 so host 1 is nothing but sender machine or transmitter machine whereas host 2 is nothing but receiver machine transmitter receiver or sender receiver okay so here let us assume that host 1 wants to send some data to the host 2 so here the data can be transmitted only from host 1 to host 2 after receiving the data host to cannot provide any acknowledgement to the sender or host to cannot send any data to the host one or sender why because here the data can be transmitted in only one direction so acknowledgement is not possible likewise uh, sending the data from uh, this uh, receiver to the sender is not possible so that's why it is called as uh, simplex uh, protocol uh, now uh, let's see some points here uh, there are some assumptions in order to implement this protocol so we need to follow some assumptions in order to implement this protocol the first assumption is already we have seen this assumption so this is unrealistic protocol why because it is quite impossible to implement this protocol so we can say that it is unrealistic protocol and the second one is second one is sender sender means transmitter so transmitter transmitter and the receiver transmitter and the receiver receiver always ready so transmitter mission that is sender mission that is host one mission is always ready in order to send data to the receiver mission so likewise receiver mission is always ready in order to accept data from the sender okay so they are always ready at any time and the third constraint and the third assumption is uh, sender has infinite amount of data so sender is always ready with infinite amount of data so at any time sender can send infinite amount of data to the receiver so likewise 
receiver so this is about sender next fourth point is about receiver receiver has infinite buffer space receiver has infinite buffer space so receiver can re receives any amount of data sent by the sender here there is no errors there is no errors so there is no need of any error control here we are here we are in a assumption that sender is sending some data to the receiver successfully there are no errors during the transmission of the data there is no corruption of any frames so the frames data is not corrupted so original frame will be received at the send receiver so there is no need to have any error control mechanisms why because sender is sending a frame to the receiver we are assuming that that frame will receives correctly at the receiver so all these are assumptions okay and the next one is no flow control no flow control why because here what is the advantage of the receiver at the receiver we have infinite buffer space so let the sender sends the data at a very fast rate then there is no problem why because at the receiver we have infinite buffer so receiver uh, can receives the data uh, we, uh, receiver can receives the data in a proper manner because there is no problem here at the receiver we have the buffer space as infinite and uh, next one is processing rate processing rate is neglected processing time is neglected processing time is neglected after receiving the frame receiver will takes some time in order to process that time in order to process that frame so after receiving the frame from the sender receiver needs to take some time in order to process that frame but here there is no restriction on the time so that's why we can simply neglect the processing time at any time receiver can receives the frame there is no problem so we can reject that okay and the next one is machines always work properly so that means machines won't crash so here we have two machines host 1 and host 2 so these two machines won't crash at any time so these two machines will work properly so these are the assumptions we need to follow in order to implement this protocol now let's see how the data will be transmitted from sender to the receiver how the data will be transmitted from the sender to the receiver with the help of some diagrams so at the sender we have uh, so this is sender mission so this is sender mission and this is uh, receiver mission receiver mission so here we have three layers the first layer is network layer so this is network layer second layer is data link layer and the third layer is physical layer so at the network layer sender receives the data so sender receives the packets get data from its previous layers okay so sender receives packets at the network layer next what the data link layer will do we know that in data link layer we represent the data in the form of the frames so that those packets will be encapsulated into frames so here the frames are prepared by the data link layer so now the data link layer send these frames now the data link layer send prepare the frames and it sends the corresponding frames to the physical layer or receiver of the re uh, receiver okay so now here this is nothing but uh, uh, frame so the frame is uh, sending to the here we have uh, receiver mission at the receiver also we have three layers the first one is network layer second one is data link layer third one is physical layer so the physical layer of the receiver mission simply receives the frame it simply receives frames from physical layer of the sender mission and the data link layer will simply extract the frames from the corresponding data and the corresponding frames will be and the corresponding frames will be and the corresponding frames delivered data 
deliver data. So what the data link layer will do? Data link layer will extract the frames from, from the corresponding data and after that uh, the corresponding uh, frames will be placed in packets and those packets will be delivered to the network layer of the receiver machine. So in this way the data will be transmitted from sender to receiver. So get data, send frame, received frame and delivered data. Okay. So this is about unrestricted simplex protocol. In the next videos we will see remaining two protocols.